Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and or others. This is the Mad Hatter here, and this is RimWorld. Some of you may be displeased with me. I've been a bit naughty. Um, I've changed a few things, specifically with the mods. As you could probably see, I've added two new things. Hospitality and Gas Trap. Gas Trap was because of one of the potential recommendations that we will be getting for our cult. Um, hospitality was also for another one of those potential recommendations we will be getting for our cult. The Birds and the Bees was removed because of a missing feature that I thought it had. Does this mod add the ability for colonists to have babies? No, nor will I ever add this. I did not notice that when I was first putting this mod in. Thus, I've removed it. Unfortunately, that destroyed our previous save. So I've gone ahead and loaded up a new save, loaded up a new world, new kobolds, new everything. Same, um, it's still a lush jungle, it's still a kobold start, there's no differences in the actual booting up of the world. Uh, we do have some different stones, we have marble and granite this time around, but um, yeah. It's very unfortunate, however, yeah, some of you may also notice that we actually have some named kobolds. Unfortunately, the too dumb smart man, smart woman, whatever, was no longer available, so I had to give you a different kobold. This particular one, Alice is a kobold at childhood and a kobold inventor. They have an annoying voice, they're too smart, they were a careful shooter, they are psychically dull. Surprisingly enough, we have a lot of passions for this particular mod, and I actually kept the pet this time. It's still a fennec fox. But that's the reason I kept it, actually. However, we've also reached an annoyance in that... Oh. Well, this is nice. Remember what I was saying about not having very much rich soil in the previous episode? Yeah, th this dark patch is entirely rich soil, so that's nice. And it's actually in a very easily defensible position. If I build up a wall right here and then cut out the a chunk of this mountain so that I build defenses possibly either right here or right here, it will actually be pretty nice, and then this area I can just wall off probably here and then cut out a chunk here to allow people to just funnel into the defenses. Hmm. This is actually a pretty decent start. I don't know what fish you get from farm it, uh, from fishing in marshy, marsh, marshy marsh, yes. Um, also, a weird thing happened. Strangely, both of the girls have the shooting skill, whereas both of the guys have the melee skill. Let's get them equipped with their weaponry. Need colonist beds. Yes, that begins us with the actual... I'm probably going to be building near here. There's a geothermal right here, so unfortunately this ritual won't last us forever. So, for structures, shelter wall, kind of fugly. A word gets the job done. For the starting base, I personally prefer going with this sort of setup with just 5x5s five for sleeping quarters. Shelter walls do this weird thing where they don't let you place a door over the walls. One, two, three. So, there we go. It's 5x5s. Five by fives. Uh, if you want to see all of this planning, I'm going to be doing a lot of it, unfortunately, as this is a game of plans. Let's see. Probably doesn't help that we're killing our orange trees, but we can always plant more later. Let's see. In addition to this, I want to get seven, I think is slightly longer, so I want nine. Uh, actually, I think I want eight. I normally go with eight. 
This particular design is one that I've found in my tests. It leads to... How do I put this? It's generally... It's generally decent for your starting game. I personally do it just simply because... Eh? Might as well, really? Let's see. Where is the furniture? The beds. So... Huh. What to get start... What to get started with? Quality builder. Let's get with good. So, this is the initial thing. They're probably going to eat because they just arrived. And I forgot to do their work priorities. So, work priorities. Work is very simple. I can tell them to do things. However, that does not mean that they'll actually go and do them. I want him to be a 2, him to be a 1, him to be a 1. We strangely had a lot of doctors. Um, Paul. Paul shall be always at a 1. The reason I do not set patient and bed rest at 1 as well is because generally whenever someone gets an infection, I tend to babysit them anyway. So, yeah. Plus, with certain diseases, there's no real point to resting in bed. Plus, if everyone just has a bunch of bruises and they're like, Ah, oh, ah, oh, can't work. I'm bruised. I'm bruised, mister. No, you can get up and go do shit. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. As for wardening, I like to have one main warden and one secondary warden. It's also very weird in that the guys all got the um, the social skills, so they'll probably be our preachers. And as for handling, I kind of want her to handle it. Alice, she'll be handling our... Negotiating. Oh, okay, I see. Actually, let's have dog be the. Let's have dog be the um. Be the person that focuses on negotiation, or no, other way around. Black is going to be our negotiator. Dog is going to be our warden. There's the word. It's right fucking there. You'd think I'd remember it. As for hunting, hunting is generally seen of as archery training for me, or shooting training, rather. Everyone constructs. If, well, no, you're just kind of ass at it, so let's have you focus on growing. We also have a lot of growers this time around, so that's going to be much more advantageous. You're also really ass at mining. Uh, two. Uh, they can stay at a three. Black and Dog are very strangely highly skilled, and I do not know why. As for Plant Cut, everyone's going to Plant Cut since everyone is equally shit. However, it does need to be higher than Construction so that it actually gets done. As for, Wow, everyone's also a crafter. Now, these guys have Burning Passion, so I want them to focus on crafting. Although Alice is actually our main cook, so I'm going to do that, whereas Rhyme is our artist. I'm actually going to scale that down to two. Art is very useful in that yeah, she can also craft. Um, art is very useful in that it is a very simple way of increasing everyone's mood. If you have something pretty to look at, you're more likely to be happy. As for hauling, I tend to use, like staggering it just so that we have, have so that we have some people cleaning while others haul. As for research, I would like Alice is normally our cook, whereas Rhyme is normally our artist, so I'd actually like to have her researching before doing art. Um, yeah, this starts a little bit easier. Uh, let's see, what should I get us started with? Let's first of all unforget everything. Then second of all, we are going to chop wood. We're going to clear this land. The reason for that is so that I can set up a grow area, growing zone. Now my original plan was because we had such a small growing zone or growing area with fertile soil, I wasn't actually going to set up very complicated farms. I was only going to really grow rice and in that growing area because food and you can turn rice into 
into flour, which is a lot more useful than rice normally is. So, yeah, rice. There are a lot of plants, and this list is only going to get larger. These two I will not be using. These are from the powerless mod. The cabbage is slightly less broken, however the turnip is very, very bad in that, well, not very bad, it's very, very good. It's too good for me to really warrant using because it grows as quickly as rice, but it produces so much more food that there becomes very little reason to actually use rice. Plus, it naturally keeps longer. So, yeah, I, I feel that that's a bit too much for me personally, so I'm going to be growing rice. In addition to rice, there are a few more things. And I'm going to be growing specifically here. I'm going to be growing, let's see, I want heel root here. Heel root requires a very high level of growing skill, minimum of eight. I think we do actually have some people that can grow it. Um, can't see the damn zones. Whereas... Really? That's too damn much. Ah, uh, that's a lot of heel root, but that's fine. It takes a long ass time to grow anyway. I think there's some fertile soil up there. And... This is going to be cotton. Cotton it well, no, actually. Ah, uh, do I want to use this for cotton? Maybe? I do kind of also want potato plants. Uh, as for the... as for what the crops do, rice, as it's a very fast growing crop, it grows within three-ish days. Let's look at it. Rice grows, yeah, it grows in three days to full maturity given the proper conditions. A low grain plant that thrives on rich soil and yields food fast, but is not nice to eat uncooked. Generally, I'm going to be using it for flour. Whereas, I don't really need very much, well, here. Let's make this heel root, whereas this will be tobacco. The reason I'm going to go with tobacco instead of, let's unpause, instead of the um words i would also actually like this to be deconstructed let's see deconstruct the reason i'm going to be going with to back with tobacco despite my misgivings about it is it's hmm, also i forgot to give everyone their time zones is because cigarillos which are the cigarettes in this game actually give you some decent bonuses they make you feel less pain. Let's see, four, six. They make you feel less pain. They increase your manipulation. However, they lower movement. I think they also increase consciousness. I could be wrong. So they're pretty good. And if you pair them with, ah, uh, let's see. What is it? If you pair them with a thing from Vegetable Garden called Baked Goods, specifically Sweet Rolls is the one I like doing because it also gives you a joy bonus and it also improves the Baked Good bonus. It, um, it allows you to negate the negatives of cigarillos, which, yeah, it's very good. Um, here. This is generally how I like to set up my colonists to work. I give them six hours of sleep because they really don't actually need very much sleep, and if you give them an hour of anything between their time of joy, they tend to handle themselves just fine. And if they need some extra sleep, then they'll go and get some extra sleep in those between hours of anything. Plus, adding in a little bit of anything allows them to go and eat and do that kind of thing. Uh, speaking of eating... Uh, yeah. Speaking of eating, let's get 
the tables set up. Specifically the short... I think I made this too large. I normally have this one shorter. Yeah, I normally have this one shorter. The reason I have it one shorter is so that the table is fine. On top of that, I want tables up here. Yeah, I normally have it one shorter. I might get an extra long table. Then, although that is like double the length, so I think not. I could also just shrink it down by one. Let's see. Structure. That's a wall. This one, and sheltered door. Let's see. Build quality, good. Build quality, good. And then... Production. Millingstone. The, like, one or two of you that have... that know how Rimworld works will probably not recognize a lot of these. So, the milling stone is what you use to grind flour, whereas the oven, which it requires bricks, is why I'm tearing that down. Let's see, a lightweight collapsible table for butchering animals while traveling. This will do us just fine. Uh, I don't actually need the proper butcher table if I have this. And that orange tree needs to go anyway, because we're going to be putting flooring in, so it'll just go down quicker. Plus it can't grow in the darkness, so that's fine. In addition to that, should I get a crafting table? I like collapsible table for doing simple tasks while traveling. I don't actually know what's available at the crafting table. I might actually still want the crafting spot instead. Like ships or bows. I think I want granite for this. Yeah, they're just chopping trees at the moment. I have them set up to chop trees before constructing so that they will... I may have given them too many cheese, trees to chop. Yeah, cheap. Trees to chop. Let's see. Let's cut that down by half. I only need this much. Um, I also forgot a growable that I'm going to need later on. I don't need very much of it, though. He says as he builds a giant grow area. I forgot two growables, actually. I need... I need flax. Flax is an alternative to cotton. It is slightly better, but it has a much longer grow period. The thing I was actually thinking of that I needed was sugarcane. Sugarcane is used for sweet buns as well as a few other things. However, it tends to clog up your work space thing. So, I wouldn't recommend normally planting it out on, on very fertile soil because you can just have people that are a bit too busy grinding up sugarcane into sugar and not actually working on important things. Like, you know, making meals so that people can eat. Um, let's see, what else? There was a video that I had going before I realized that the original save of this world was uh, no longer available, let's put it that way. Very aggressive animals, my ass. Bunch of capybar. The emus and the cassowaries will fuck us up. I'll give it that. Then That's a very aggressive animal. This is also the area where snakes tend to spawn. As well as a few other things, I think there's a thing. Yeah, here we go. Arthropleura. Stab scar permanent gunshot injury. I do believe this is actually a part of the Megafauna mod. Long extinct giant arthropods. Brought back to life as a part of the Megafauna project. Yep, part of the Megafauna mod. This means they are very dangerous. However, these are... They don't actually eat meat, so they won't attack us. Well, if they are turned into a manhunter pack, then they will attack us, but the point being, they're less likely to do so, and I think attacking them, they won't fight back, maybe? 
and the armor you can make from them from them is actually quite good. On the extinct giant arthropods brought back, brought back to life, the largest known land invertebrate of all time, arthropods are huge, solitary, herbivorous millipedes that are mostly harmless and will only attack in self-defense. Okay, some maniacs are willing to pay unreasonable amounts of money for eggs of this beast. Okay. The cobra is actually more dangerous than this thing is. So, not all of the megafauna beasties will fuck us up. Many will. But not all. Let's see. Uh, this, this little kitchen thing that I'm working on, let's, let's bump this up to triple speed. This little kitchen thing that I'm working on also will not be the permanent kitchen. That being said, um, it's going to be around for probably a few episodes just simply because I need a kitchen. I'm afraid that's the truth. Oh hey. One, one thing about the vegetable garden mod is that it does add a lot of early game fruits. It, it allows you to actually like run around and... Uh, what's the word? It allows you to actually run around and gather things rather than having to actually farm for a large majority of the game. That being said, I am also planting a shit ton. It may take them a while to get this all done. Probably a couple days at least. However, that being said, they'll be fine. Uh, once they finally finish clearing all of these trees out. I think this is ironwood? No, it's a tree. Kekropia tree, I think. Maximum kek tree. Deek tree is good for wood. They're just kind of sleeping at the moment. Unfortunately, there will be these lull periods where they just sleep. Okay, so something I think I haven't quite talked about yet was today's ghost episode. Unfortunately, the visual quality is a very common thing, and it's been an issue of late with Ghost. I don't know specifically what causes it, it just kind of happens. And I think it's just something to do with OBS. I don't know how to fix it, or if it even can be fixed. But, um... It's... If it continues to be an issue, that, that may be the final ghost episode. That or I'll just have to just upload the one upload the ones that are worth uploading in the future and not upload ones that are of that bad quality. The reason I uploaded it this time was just to show how bad a lot of the recordings turn out to be, and I don't notice them until I've already finished recording, and it turns out that, oh my, like half an hour of work is down the drain. And I saved because I thought the game would be fine. Let's, uh, let's cut that. The orange tree also needs to be cut. All of these need to be cut down. Why is there idle colonist? Rhyme, why are you doing nothing? Rhyme, go do things. You can construct, even though you're ass at it. But, um, yeah. So, I... I am trying. I don't know if it's a thing with OBS or if my computer's just shit. It might be a thing with OBS. If it is, I don't know how to fix it. I may just need to update it. However, I've heard that updating OBS can also break things. So, I don't know. I'm torn. It was working just fine, up until now. Um, yeah. Oh, the butcher table's done. Butcher creature, too infinitely. Uh, this particular butcher table, it, yeah, bleh, words. I can speak, I swear. This, oh, I'll have this go at, like, normal speed. This particular butcher table is slightly slower than the normal butcher table, however it is also cheaper and smaller, that's why I set it up. Um, normally I'd set up stools there to keep colonists comfortable while they work, because if you set up stools in the work area, this little circle right here, 
they will actually sit on them while they work, which is comfortable to them. I don't know. I don't personally like stools. I just, I can't sit in anything without a back. That's just me, though. Grind bulk grains into flour. Do forever. Details, not corn. Close. Uh, remember what I said when thinking about adding in corn? The main reason I was thinking about doing so was because corn meal is very useful, is necessary for a lot of recipes. However, that being said, flour is also required in those particular recipes. So just having corn, while it does increases the amount of things I can make, it does not increase the quality of things I can make, which is unfortunate. That being said, polenta is actually pretty nice to have around. It's this sweet, it's this sweet little donut thing, like jelly-filled donut type thing. And the colonists seem to like it, and it doesn't require sugar despite being sweet. Let's see, French bulk sugar. Do forever. And the reason I have it set on do forever is because there's nothing else to use sugarcane for, and rice will rot very quickly but um flour rice flour will not that cassowary starts eating our flax i'm going to be very angry rhyme why are you staring at the bed oh you're deconstructing it okay so the reason they're deconstructing things is because everything has a qual well almost everything Almost everything has a quality. This particular bed is shoddy. That means that it is uncomfortable to sleep in and it does not beautify the room at all. I have them set to try and build good quality things. Good quality is generally, well, normal quality is passing, but good quality is when they start getting bonuses normally. However, because everyone is kind of ass at construction, it's a very low chance to get good quality as opposed to normal quality or lower. And, and while it's kind of unfortunate that they don't have a place to sleep, they don't, as long as they're not sleeping outside and their rest isn't disturbed, they don't particularly mine too much. Also need these plants cut, cut that as well, and cut this. Uh, it would probably also serve if I brought in things. Have they deconstructed that? No, they have not. Is this granite as well? Is it slate? granite. Okay, so... Structures. We probably would have actually already had this done if I hadn't have given them this giant-ass growing task. However, getting food up and running is very important. Granted, I probably could have gone with smaller growing areas, but uh, generally you need a lot of food. You need a lot more food, especially when you are in these... Er Why is everyone so happy? Let's speed things up. Um, everyone is just kind of happy. Nuzzled. Oh, <laughs> a cute animal nuzzled me. Spacious interior, feeling great. I lost that one. New colony, optimism. Hooray! Tons of joy, extremely low expectations. Yeah, yeah, that's to be expected. Um, and this is not, like, the last of the design. I still have yet to put in floors. I'll put in chess tables here. That's why I built the stools first. It's just... Chess tables are very expensive and they take a very long time to craft, so I want them to get the beds done first, as well as the table and the chairs and the actual crafting table. You know, that I want them to get the functional things in first before I let them have any sort of joy. Let's see. Um, as for meat, I can make meat pies later on. I need a meal source. Yes, I know. Um, I can make meat pies later on. I'm eyeing this cassowary because it likes to hang out around our crops. Animals do eat crops, by the way. <laughs> the game is that dickish. Um, this chinchilla is actually probably eating our rice. So I have a tendency to hunt anything that starts getting near our crops. Just happens. As for animal, animals we are likely to tame, the monkeys are not very likely despite their high intelligence. Capybara, also not very likely. If there are any boars around the map, I'll be very happy to have some of those as they are the equivalent of a dog in terms of intelligence and dogs are able to haul things. 
The Finnick Fox is also the equivalent of a dog. It's just small and cute, so I kept it. That, that's really the only reason. In fact, I can do that. The only thing it can't do is rescue people, but that's because it's tiny and it can't carry an entire kobold. It can haul small things. It doesn't have the best hauling space, but it's still useful, so I kept it. Let's see, as for dragons, we had a cult thing going. Unfortunately, the cults will be dedicated to specific gods. I can't do anything to change it so that they actually say, like, we worship the red dragon, and so on and so forth, but... Oh, visitors. They have nothing to trade. Visitors just kind of pop up every once in a while. Uh, they'll eat your food. We'll stay here for a while, excessively writing pages of strange symbols. Alice, why are you what are you writing? This is generally- oh, hey, they found the monolith. Grimoire completed. Yeah, generally your, your uh, people will write this grimoire. The grimoire is necessary in order to make a occultic research- or occult research station. Let's see, where is it? Uh, I think it's in miscellaneous. Yeah, Forbidden Knowledge Research Center. However, uh, um, visitors and non-cult people will be very pissed off if they find this. So I need to be able to hide it. So it might be a few episodes before we finally get a um, actual cult up and running. These guys might be slightly pissy because they don't actually have an, an area for them to sleep or yet. But uh, I don't care. I'm still setting things up for my colonists. Your colonists can fuck right off. Why is dog upset? Dog, why are you upset? Hungry, ugly environment, cramped interior, feeling good. Oh. Oh. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, because we don't have a kitchen, I'm probably not going to be able to hunt anything. Like, we just don't have anything set up yet because they're not deconstructing the goddamn building. Alice is probably going to be breaking off and on. Sanity lost major. That's just gonna, like, oh, sanity loss actually gives you things. It gives increased manipulation, increased moving, and increased hearing. It. Oh, I thought it increased breathing there for a little while. Um, so she's just faster at doing things. She, she does better at things. She, her talking is decreased. And she also has a higher break threshold. What this means is this little bar down here is when she'll start to break. See what I mean? She's already at a major break risk and she's very happy. The sanity loss is unfortunately, it, it'll go down slowly, but um, without a thing to actually deal with it, like a typewriter or something. Unfortunately, I can't really do anything for her. She may die, unexplainedly. Generally, mental breaks, so long as, yeah, she's pretty much always going to be meddling around major and minor break risk. Yeah. She may go berserk. If she does, we may accidentally kill her or rip bits off of her. Which is unfortunate, but it does happen. Hopefully we won't. Uh, we are all equipped with clubs, so it's less likely we'll kill people when we hit them. Man, they're really ass at this whole construction thing. However... Um, so yeah, as for dragons, I'll say this before we go. As for dragons, it has been suggested between blue, copper, Black, Platinum, and Rust. Black and Copper would be pretty much the same thing. They are very set on being very good hosts. Uh, as is Blue, to a certain extent, but Black and Copper are also tricksters. They like to trick people. <laughs> as you could probably guess, they also like... They, they also enjoy employing traps. Uh, that's normally how you do it in RimWorld, so I was less likely to go for those. But someone wanted it, so I guess. Uh, whereas 
black is a lot more mean. They're more likely to expend the lives of colonists and animals and just people under them for the sake of a trap and amusement. Uh, copper is more like they'll just set up a deadfall and then forget about it. And eventually something will run across it and, oh hey, free food! In that way, they're a lot like fairy dragons. Um, another suggestion was for... Uh, what was it? It was for platinum dragons. Platinum dragons would require me to actually pay attention to the requests. Sometimes there will be requests that pop up over here for... See? They just ate my goddamn pemmican. Um, occasionally there will be requests for like you to send a trader or just random people around to different places for items and loot and whatnot. I normally ignore those, however a platinum dragon is very interested in showing large amounts of strength. So the way I see it, being able to complete those is a sign that you are strong. You are a strong man. You are a strong dragon. You're able to do things others cannot. Auto saving. Um, but yeah. As for the rust dragon, that one is actually probably the most interesting one, and one of the ones I'm most likely going to be going to going for. The way the rust dragon would work is our temple would employ skylights, which are areas without roofs where we place weapons that are of a subpar or of a quality worthy of a dragon meaning if they are good or above I will be putting them in these rust spots unless they are made by us or not made of steel so basically these spots will require some kind of sacrifice normally um, Every weapon in this game deteriorates even if technically the metal of it does not. As do clothing. Clothes. As does clothing. That's probably the proper word for it. Uh, production. I want to get in the oven. As does clothing. However... Uh, however, again... If we make it and it's not made of steel, or of a good or better quality, then we'll keep it. However, if it is of a good quality, then we will set it out in these little skylights because an unroofed area allows things to deteriorate. And they're leaving. They didn't care for their stay. They probably won't be coming back anytime soon. Like I said, we don't have an area for them, so they're kind of pissy. If we had an area for them with like tables and shit, as well as extra beds, they'd probably be more happy. I'll probably turn this into a visitor's area with like tables and joy and shit, as well as beds. But, um. So yeah, Rust Dragon will be the strangest one, however, also one of the best ones. However, that being said, this has been the Mad Hatter here, and this has been Rust. Or not rust. Entirely different fucking game. However, yeah, words. This has been the Mad Hatter here, and this has been Rimworld. Uh, hopefully, this episode turns out alright. If the ghost ones continue to be difficult with me, I will have to cancel the series. Just flat out. I don't know what's causing the issues, and I don't know how to fix it. It might be OBS, it might be my computer. If it's my computer, then I can't help that. But, aside from that, I do wish you all a good day and a good time. I will see you next time with more Rimworlds and more Kobolds. Hopefully we'll be able to pick a dragon by then. Goodbye.